God bless you, my brothers and my sisters. This is Minister Rashimba Battles coming to you from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Hello, my name is Lilia. Um, I am my mother's daughter, and I am 32 now. I have three kids, and my oldest is five. Uh, well, my mom told me that she wrote a book books now it's awesome i used to write short stories <laughs> so i never really got to the point of writing a book because i never really planned it out but i am so so happy for her so when she told me she's doing a documentary i i said sure i'll go ahead and put my two cents about my mom and her, her um growing up and stuff with my mother. I am so sorry. My phone went off. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, growing up with my mom when I was little, I was uh, born in the military. Don't really remember, remember much about it though. Um, I do remember this lady's house that we used to go to. I think she was near some water. I couldn't remember. Um, but I do have a lot of memories of my uncle though because I was born in Florida so I know there's like a, a lot of a lot of uh, military bases there uh, so anyway back to what I was saying uh, an instance uh, situation I remember oh <laughs> it was me and my three brothers uh, did I say three? One, two. I'm lying. I only got two. Yeah, I, I only got two. Sorry, y'all. And um, we were uh, we were doing something, and they end up spilling all of the uh, Kool Aid on the floor. My mama come home. She asked me. Who spilled the Kool-Aid on the floor? Guess who got blamed for it? I did, because I'm the oldest, so I, I got in trouble for it. And it was me. I know, this is the worst. Um, growing up, I don't really remember too much of a lot of time that I could have spent with my mom. Because she had to work to take care of us. So she didn't really have much of a balance that she wanted, but she did try. She did give me some birthday parties, I do remember. Um, I just know that as a single black mother, it is hard trying to raise five kids. Um, but through God, she was able to handle it. And she has, trying to tell you, my mama used to be a sailor. <laughs> but now, can do in your life because I need even to tell my mama I'm an old dancer and now she is a pastor so yes God is good all the time and I give my mama I'm so proud of her and I hope this documentary reaches those who are in the same position who are having it hard and they just need a way out here in Philadelphia, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, my brothers and my sisters, glory to God. My journey to from the pulpit to the pulpit, my brothers and my sisters, and guess what? This is where I grew up at um, from the age of, I'd say, 11 or so. This is where I was, and um, my foster home that I was in from age 12 to 18 is here, right on this block. Right here, right here, right here. 
and um, just gonna give you a glimpse of everything here you can see right behind me is where I grew up my brothers and my sisters that's where I grew up at and um, my journey to from the pulpit to the pulpit my brothers and my sisters and yes we are live in Philadelphia and um, so this is where I was um, right behind me is where I was raised I'll show you here I'm trying to get the best angle possible um, until I graduated high school so guess what this is stop number one and we are moving on to stop number two so guess what stay tuned because in order for you to understand from the pulpit to the pulpit okay let's see here let's see what battles she would be my baby sister she's my brothers all we're doing Katara, Katara. I call my baby sister because the last time I saw her was the summer of 1973. So she was a big one, I was about three. She was two, one, three, and I was eight. Uh, I remember her because I know she doesn't remember. Like with all families, I guess they're, they're, they're family secrets around sometimes. But I can remember that uh, whenever I would see her, I'd see her every weekend, but it was never at their house, it was never at our house. It was at the, I guess, the mutual friend of our parents' house. And Thank I'm you for watching. Thank you for watching. Me and my mom we moved to Atlantic City, New Jersey. We left Philly, moved to Atlantic City, New Jersey. And Pop didn't come to about a year later, actually. He showed up a year later. I can remember at Christmas time, because he was always saying the family's going to be together. Because I was, at that time, growing up as an only child. He was like, yeah, we're going to have your brother and sister with you soon. So every year we go Christmas shopping. And I would always pick out something that I wanted to get them for Christmas. They would always, always uh, buy for me. And I'd wrap it up and everything. And uh, kind of later in life, they ended up, <laughs> they took it back to the store. <laughs> but uh, 
I always wanted to make sure I had something for him for Christmas, for both of them. Then, uh, right, this was the time I was about fourth grade. So I say fourth through uh, eighth grade, I always had heard a story. That he had your brother and sister gonna come live with you. And I always wanted brothers and sisters to live with me. Because everybody else had brothers and sisters in big households. And I was, like I said, growing up as an only child. Then I guess by the eighth grade, I realized that that was uh, a fantasy. It wasn't gonna happen. So once I graduated high school, I went to the military. I went to the Navy right out of high school. And they had a people locator. So I would search all the time trying to find them. And it wasn't until I want to say 2006 is when I found the two, 2006, 2007. I was on uh, Facebook was around, so that was a different reason why I was searching. And when I searched, I was typing Sheba Battles and I couldn't find anything anywhere. And I, and I typed in uh, regular battles. Five or six people popped up. So I went, contacted all of them, and I saw one of them. And I knew what I saw that was him. So got in touch with him and didn't let him know what was exactly at first. So we had a conversation. I wanted to go up to meet him, have a conversation face to face. He figured out at this time he remembered who I was. And you know, he wasn't really for it, so I asked him could he let his, uh, let, let his sister know. And I was trying to get in touch with him, he said he would, but uh, he didn't do it. And uh, 2019, 2019, 2019 or 2020, it was 2020, when uh, I was just going through his friends list. I contacted her, uh, told her who I was, and at that time, Pop was still alive, and uh, we were just both so excited. And we were supposed to meet up a couple times, but because of uh, the pandemic and everything, things didn't happen that he ended up uh, passing away before she actually got up to me. see the other side of the school this is Overbrook High Overbrook High School the school that I went to and graduated from and so you can see here behind me um, the school I graduated from went here from my start my freshman year to my my senior year graduated this is a um, this is a magnet school uh, magnet uh, they specialize in music uh, math science awesome school awesome school one of the top-notch schools here in Philadelphia um, and I was blessed and privileged to be one who came to this school and um, I was a music magnet. 
uh, played the violin I was in the orchestra so that kind of really opened me up to classical music opened me up to um, knowing ma major keys minor keys having a pretty good ear for tone and for sound but <coughs> excuse me all right here we go this is Overbrook High and they call this school the castle on a hill and you can see why it's a pretty huge school a uh, pretty huge school awesome school I tell you teachers are just top-notch um, I remember my orchestra and band teacher tall gentleman mr. Allen that was his name um, he was a pretty cool guy pretty cool guy I tell you um, but here we are stop number one on day two uh, from the pulpit to the pulpit my journey and then if you look behind me here across the street there is a stand <coughs> I used to always go there well not always but you know that was the main place to go to get something to eat <coughs> My main thing was the hot sausage. Yeah, they know hot sausage was good, okay? Hot sausage, bag of chips, and the soda. Yep, I sure did. Um, it's like, right, gosh, rushing all that high cholesterol. Yep, you ain't think about that when you're young, right? Um, but yeah, that's the stand that we went to. Um, and uh, before school and even after school, that was the place to go. So, here we are, people. Here we are, my beautiful people. Day two, from the pulpit to the pulpit. And we're about to move to stop number two. God bless you. Stay tuned.
changed a lot before I left. They didn't have this little sweetie thing here. But now they have this sweetie thing here. <coughs> that you have to go through so that you can um show to you here so you see what I'm talking about. This is the L. This takes you up to the L, the elevated um 